with uh, Caribbean Youth Environment Network and uh, we have Terrell and Lizelle and they're both uh, part of this youth network making change. Good morning. How are you both? Hey, good morning. Hi, good. good morning. We are fine. And l let me start with you, Lizelle. You, how did the organization first come into being? How did you first interact with this organization? So for me, I've been a member of CYEN for about a year and it actually just came across my Facebook and I was looking for some things to get involved in and so I decided to check it out and no regrets since. So um, it's been a really good chance to interact with other youth in Trinidad and Tobago and who are, f who are familiar with and interested in the environment and also a good way for me to give back and to help out with the field. Trout, you are the vice president of the organization. How did the organization first start? Um, so the Caribbean Youth Environment Network is a regional youth body established in 18 countries throughout the region. Um, we began back in the early 1990s. Um, the Trinidad and Tobago chapter started in 2011, and it was essentially a gathering of youth. Um, in Barbados by Mr. Reggie Burke and they all decided to come together and create this youth network that could help with youth development throughout the Caribbean. What is, you say the network will be leading youth, uh, youth environment and development organization will be responsible for creating appropriate spaces for young people to participate in the design, development and implementation. It's a huge mandate. How are you really going to achieve this? Um, holistically, we believe in having youth participate in all different levels. So some of the different environmental issues and environmental themes that we speak on, such as biodiversity, climate change, and sustainable development, have different layers to them. So we hope to have youths participate in all the different levels of these issues. So by chance, we do school visits, um, youth development product, projects and we also interact with different stakeholders at different levels. So we hope to include youth at all levels of society on the different issues we hope to tackle. So give me an example of <coughs> some of the work that your organization has been doing. You know, a lot of times we hear all of these interesting statements and they're very they're overall cop law statements. Give me an example of something that you've done. So we actually just closed up a project, the Learn and Flow project, and with that project we went across to different schools. We adopted two rivers, the Colon Watershed System in Tobago and the Arima Watershed System. And what we did, we went to the students in different schools, we talked to them about water quality, we gave them the opportunity to see that impact of having not clean water on them and also <coughs> on how they can help the situation. Um, and we're about to start another project called the Yield Youth Initiative for Empowering Leadership and Development. And with that, we're also taking that outreach to schools. Um, we're doing Bonaire, uh, El Dorado Sec, and also Bishops East and also with our members as well to give them the chance to be able to learn more about the sustainable development goals and not just about each goal as individually but the linkages between each goal so for example how climate action relates to gender and how that can relate to poverty alleviation and so forth why climate change um, as we know climate change is one of the most um, important phenomena facing our human society in these modern centuries. Um, climate change, as we know, affects small island developing states such as Trinidad and Tobago in a very impactful way. We are very vulnerable, these small island developing states of which Trinidad and Tobago is, um, to the effects of climate change. For example, it is expected in the coming years to increase global temperatures by 1.5 degrees, and this is a very um, serious serious effect that as well have as it could lead to sea level rise and affect our weather systems such as more intense hurricanes as we saw with Irma and Maria in earlier years. Now, do people understand <clears throat> the climate change? It, it's such a broad topic. Do, you, do we really understand? A lot of times when people think climate change, they just think unpredictable weather patterns, but you don't see the long-lasting effects of what for coastal communities, for tropical islands like ourselves, for flora and fauna, do they understand the tangibles of cl climate change? I do believe that we have more work to make, to do, sorry, in making persons more aware of just how impactful climate change is. As you see, it's beyond just unpredictable weather systems and more intense droughts and more intense rainfall patterns and so on. These things can have effects on our agriculture. So how we grow our food, it affects um, how we are able to extract water because more drought will mean less water for us to be able to use. So these kind of stuff 
will affect like agriculture or economy in the long run. And as you say, culture, because persons such as Lebanon communities will have to move where they grow up and so on. So it definitely affects society at all levels. So how do you explain that point to, to children? So, and that is a very, it is, it is a difficult thing to bring across because just with our mentality here, it's like if it doesn't affect us, it doesn't exist in right. a sense. And so to, sh to be able to link that to what we're seeing. So, for example, the flooding that took place um, in the past few months, that now we can say, okay, well, that was different. And it's not just a matter of the intense weather. Uh, uh, intense weather is also a waste management issue. But that's a whole different other point which we also have to convey. But to specifically take that and say, okay, well, this here can be related to climate change and to put that effort into looking at that and to see that connection to see okay so this has not happened before and what are the causes of that and to use that research method to bring it to children to bring it to the youth and to show them that it they be linkages because the linkages are really important and so I think that's one of the main things that we are going to try to focus on to show them those connections what are some of the plans you have for the future um, well, this year, as Lizelle pointed out, we have the SDG goal um, project under the CSO for Good Governance um, initiative. Um, for the rest of the year, we also hope to focus on having different events to sensitize youth on environmental issues. Um, we want to reach out, particularly, we know Easter camp and so on will be coming up in the very near future. We want to reach out to persons who are planning such camps and tell them that we are available to come around to the different camps and schools to do presentations and projects. We also hope to continue building our capacity in terms of membership so that we could continue reaching out to other youths throughout all of society. And I guess another main thing that we have been doing and to continue is that stakeholder engagement because um, that's an issue that is that we are seeing in Trinidad where there are a lot of different organizations uh, focused on the environment but there's a disconnect and so to bring these organizations together to give our members a chance to interact with these organizations and to be able to bring that professional sphere to the student sphere to the CSO sphere. Closing comments, let's get people involved in your organization because this is about highlighting the work of the youth and getting more people involved. Um, we definitely want to encourage persons to reach out to CYN. Um, we encourage you to send an email to cyn.tt.chapter.gmail.com or you can send us a direct message on Facebook. Our page is the Caribbean Youth Environment Network, Trinidad and Tobago Chapter, or simply on Instagram, CYNTT. Um, we also want to stress the importance of the power of the individual, although it is important to join a group like CYN, we also want to empower our members to recognize that the impact that they can have on their own. So apart from just joining such a very engaging youth group like our own, we also encourage persons to go out there and start discussions in their workplace, in their homes about the different environmental issues that are facing us. And we also want them to like share information on social media and just become more aware because it's about making our society more environmentally conscious and ensuring that we recognize the value that the environment has to us. Yeah, and I guess not just talking about it, but to actually take action and do something about it. So, for example, if you see your neighbor throwing something in the drain, you go and you, you say something about it, let them know, hey, you know, we have a, a collection system, you can organize that. Or if you, you yourself just don't, like there are avenues to recycle, there are avenues to properly get rid of like your waste and to uh, do different things. So basically take action. If you see something, talk about it. You reach out to others, tell other people if they're doing wrong and just to uh, be a neighbor's keeper. And why, I saw some of the images there with the hashtag I'm a volunteer. Why do you all volunteer? So for me, I like for <coughs> the main thing I know about myself and what I want is that I want to be able to make a difference. and. To volunteer, I think, is a key way to be able to do that because you get to directly touch people and to help them and to see how you can you make an impact on their lives. So that's my reason. So okay. me, I think the environment and learning is such a very beautiful thing. So like through volunteering, I get to speak to different persons and interact with them and get to share my love for learning and the environment as well. So to me, I think it's just about creating a shared experience where people and we can all recognize you know the beauty of the environment and what it does for us 
On a daily basis. On a daily basis. Well, thank you again and congratulations. We take a short break. When we come back, we'll have more for you. Stay with us. This is The Morning Brew.